take it away. Mm-hmm. where they're more 
the more prescribed spaces and creating the in-between pockets for different activities. Actually, thank you for that. Um, and Dr. Sutton, because you got really creative with your board. How, um, how did, what was your role and how did that influence how well, I'm a child and I'm outdoors <laughs> and I'm trying to hide and seek. So these are places that I can hide. The pushing and, and the patio. Yeah, yeah, that's supposed to be outside. Yeah, and the patio is backyard. So we have a backyard playing hide and seek. Every child gets a place to hide. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. Um, so before we continue the game, I'm just gonna jump back into the presentation. Um, so we did a reflection and now kind of a critique. So um, around the world, and we're looking, around the world, specifically in Latin America and we're looking at Mexico, there is a problem of mass-produced housing um, where this mass-produced housing produces isolation, there's a lack of infrastructure, and due to the tightness and confinedness of space, there is also, also no sense of humanity. Um, looking at Mexico, but these are some examples of what self-built homes look like. Um, there are areas of entrepreneurship with um, stores, and there are uh, places of gathering built into um, these uh, structures, and also all of these buildings can be self-maintained. Over the past decade or so, with the introduction of standardized projects, um, the architect or the designer has been more involved in making living spaces. The residents' ownership has become more and more removed um, from themselves and from, uh, they have been more and more removed from the house. So a brief, uh, this is the site that I'm looking at. It's a, upper, a new and coming um, town, uh, Colonia Calicia. It's in Baja California, uh, Mexico. Uh, jumping over that. This is um, the community that I have kept in mind as I have been um, researching and designing this game. Um, full disclosure, uh, I did not have access to an actual community, so these people have been gathered based on documentaries that I have uh, watched over time. These are real people with real issues um, that come from the built environments that they um, reside in. So this idea of kind of building blocks emerged for me um, that is connected very strongly with ownership. And ownership to me is the connection uh, to a space that is created through investment, um, that, is convicted, sorry, that is created through investment, um, through community design and innovation. Um, part of the critique of the mass-produced housing that I'm pointing out is that we're building bad homes. And the reason is, or one of the reasons could be, is that communities don't have the ability to Feed, uh, to give feedback or to um, sh get, uh, share their perspective of where they're living. And that's because the design process is not designed, is not created for that. Um, and so in inevitably designers build bad designs because that's all they have. Uh, and so a cycle emerges. But what if we were able to create or um, redesign the process? Um, Uh, sorry, I lost my place in my little thing. Um, currently, the model of design does not make ownership a priority. However, through the intentional integration of education, empowerment, and engagement in design, we can begin to give back ownership to communities. Um, and this is kind of the quote that has driven everything. No design will be better, no design will be better, uh, will be a better home than for, sorry. No one will design a better home for someone than those who are intended to live in it. Um, and so what is the value of community knowledge? There, when you're entering or studying a new site, no one will know the history or no one will know the events that happen in the location and how people are better than those who are there. There is a culture that as architects or someone um, from the outside can never know. There are local building techniques which help people maintain the spaces that they have. And there's also ways of people celebrating themselves and to be celebrated that we might not have access to. So I propose this new method of design, which, which starting off is very linear, it's the one that we have, but through flexibility, through adjustment, um, we can make something that loops upon itself and that has the ability to grow into, um, that, grow, that grows upon itself, that we're kind of like educating and re uh, redefining the process as it continues. Um, and 
yeah, it, it can uh, grow and expand. And so this designing a new process uh, could take a very long time. And based on the time that we did have, I decided to focus in on what an intervention could be within an area of focus. Um, I'm focusing uh, within the realm of architects, public housing, and retaining uh, end users or residents uh, to stay within their building. So what could that, what would some interventions for that be? And so an iteration in this repetitive uh, nature that I'm proposing could be to um, reach, to reach out to partners, uh, to gain trust with community, hold a workshop and, or plan a workshop and then um, do the workshop itself. So this is kind of like my method of exploration. I have done a workshop before if, and this one was pertained or this one revolved around the idea of how spaces flow. Um, so much like the icons that are on your paper, um, these icons were assigned to certain spaces and the participants were asked to move space around uh, depending on uh, the community member that they were representing. Again, full disclosure, uh, the people who participated in this workshop were designers, um, much like us in this room, but they were asked to step into the role of one of the cue cards. Um, I intended, or I tried to also bring in this, um, inter or this learning aspect of da uh, modeling daylight to see how facades um, change the space uh, within. Um, but there were a lot of learning lessons with this. It didn't go as I expected, but I think the biggest thing that I took away was um, the need to not only want to educate community, but educate myself as a designer to be able to have conversations. Um, I tried to take a big step and I needed to take a step back to learn how to take smaller steps to move forward. Um, and then uh, another lesson learned from this workshop was that um, shared spaces seem to be a very big topic of the conversation that we had during that workshop. Um, one quote that I got from uh, the people who were acting as these community members, um, uh, as in, acting as Felipe, which was one of the community members, me, uh, is saying that no one pays attention to me, and if you're giving me the opportunity to engage, I'm going to take it. Um, so in your hands, bringing it back to the game, there are a series of um, depictions of how uh, spaces can be social and how people can interact, not necessarily around, um, I'm just gonna leave it at that, how people can interact in different spaces and who interacts with you within those spaces as well. There's also a portion that like uh, space changes or our perception of space changes um, from when we go tonight today. So how does how a space is lit change your uh, interaction with the environment as well as the people? Um, and then uh, in a portion that we'll discover is, uh, discuss as well, there's also an outreach to um, community. So we go from a smaller scale to a bigger scale. Um, and there's also a list of like who is the community, who is involved in this conversation um, from the small scale of a home to the larger scale of the community. Um, and so then jumping kind of back into where we left off, there, uh, there could be really simple ways of envisioning what a space is using these blocks. Um, just by adding people we get a sense of scale and uh, how people can interact. And so we, that was the solid version, then this is the, the version that we did together, kind of um, opening space and allowing the spaces to flow based on the type of social interactions, and then what that can look like as well. And then as we move, there is a conversation of um, how much room or how much access to daylight does each room need, and of course this, uh, this is a, an opinion based on your cue card, but also ideally like the community members who would be responding with this. Uh, to understand how spaces um, are affected by the exterior as well. And then you would bring your boards together, this was done individually, but you would bring it together and start to see how your interior private spaces are actually spaces that, um, as they spread out, get shared with each other, uh, therefore creating a smaller piece of the neighborhood or community. And then, um, and then there would be a reflection at top, and then we would jump to this bigger scale of um, community, and so, sorry to disrupt this beautiful organization. But all of these, um, these are uh, boards that can flip together and when we turn them around, they become the community board um, to be able to have that conversation as part of the toolkit. And so the icons on the, 
on the uh, paper that has been distributed um, talks about this. And so in this one, we're learning to um, address the relationship of social spaces, not only with each other or new interventions, but also existing, um, existing framework and structures. And so uh, the community would gather and get together and start to talk about what does it mean when we put a space here, what happens when you share this space and this space, and kind of like how our interactions overall would be. Um, so just kind of a series of that. And then there would be a, um, a reflection and a conversation based on like, um, again, either the cue card or the person you um, would actually be as a community member interacting with this about how some decisions have been made um, to, uh, understand uh, the perspectives of others. Um, and so this is a quote that I gathered from one of my readings. It is the community members that activate and give meaning to spaces, and so we must give that power back to the community to make their own spaces. Um, ideas for the future could be that um, these games, that which is part of the larger um, uh, proposed loop of, uh, design, of a design process, could be interventions that could be then dispersed into other parts of the town and then city and so on. Um, and as uh, academically, we can also propose a this uh, new method of thinking, this new design process, as a, a new course or a, a new minor at school where we really uh, think about community engagement um, first and foremost. Um, and then professionally, um, this is a reflection of what I thought of during the whole time is naively I went into this process thinking do, ask, listen, um, and it has been a, a fight with my own ego to want to design something this whole time in actual structure. But through these um, interactions, I learned that really it's listen, ask, do. Um, and so I leave that with you as my final closing is listen, ask, do.
for example, you know, how space is shared. He says, I want you to think about the interrelationships of that space, the desire. If you went to that, you know, to these people and said, you know, what's important to you about being able to make your, your own space? They might come up with a very good midterm review also where we are wrestling with what's the design of the house to this is I think you again I think you identified and pursued a really beautiful path to understanding the design process which is a design like I think you're saying there is a design here it's not without design like your voice is here which is really powerful so I'm so happy to see what you where you came from the interview to here and, and clearly the entire semester was and the research was very fruitful I, I can't help but think, like, what are the other pieces? Like, how many more, like, like, when you design something like this, how far can you, how many things, how many aspects of the process can be in here? So you have room types, and then you have sort of community types, but there's all sorts of, I think, qualitative, like, what, where does the qualitative, so when I was I was arranging my blocks, which you knocked over. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, like I was thinking, okay, there's the street and there's the back, and if I put a bedroom here, I'm going to put it there because I want to be able to see the street. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to put a bedroom here with a space between it, between this and the child's room because I don't want to hear my kid mm -hmm. right yelling. Or I'm going to put something back here because it's going to be brighter. Like I wonder if there's a whole other set of tier. Question like, what pen are you giving me? More pencil. Are there other pieces that talk about like quiet or loud or bright or dark or you can like from the kitchen you can smell but here you can't smell what's happening in the kitchen? Like how do you add another set of experiential or phenomenological pieces that take us beyond just it's this type of room or this type of community function into the experience of the house and then also time? Like what's it like in one season versus another season, or what's it like when a child is two versus the child is fifteen? I know that it's different. Yeah. <laughs> Living that, yeah. right? So and you know that too, right? So like, what? Where do you add qualitative pieces to the without this just becoming like a bag of like a million pieces that you can't well, possibly sort through? Well, if you look at this as an educational process, it's not a reality. It's not like you know, you know, you're going to have a layout. Your your um, your story has been iteration. Mm -hmm. So maybe another iteration is getting to the sun is getting to privacy, is getting to change. Yeah. And that you you look at this as a series of educational yeah. experiences. Because yeah. your your education empowerment and engagement, right? So this is an educational process. Yeah. And you, you don't get educated in that. I think that uh, speaks specifically to what I was first grappling with or like how I like went about it is that I tried to jump in maybe a little too hard on the engagement portion and I like realized through the conversations that um, again like there is education about design or spaces that need to be given to people but like it um, also I think a big portion of that is designers or architects learning how to speak about spaces and non architectural terms as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was uh, something that um, I tried to invoke in like the, the handouts is, is asking questions about more experiences rather than um, how would you use this space or yeah. yeah. And then so I think one one layer so we, we were um, we were more talk, talking about the how could or that's how I understood how you can set up different ways of of um, getting getting information or or different layers of so it would almost be different layers of yeah. the game, different yeah. different yeah. versions of the yeah. game together yeah. different things. Yeah. But then I think yes, so that's the one thing. The provide provide setting the rules almost, so different layers of setting the rules of setting up layers of a game. Yeah. But then also about trying to find a way to, to read and have the conversation, facilitate the conversation, because I'm, 
I realized that there, there are different ways in which you can set up and you can read what you what you set up here. So I just from my own experience, I set it up as as blocks as and and well and what seems to call it as void or the solid mm -hmm. space, so creating creating somehow setting up the solid space and and making the um, the the void spaces around yeah. it useful. Yeah. So that was the the way that I set it up. But then I was I was actually really interested in in looking at it in a completely different way, in which just looking at them as as almost containers. So how mm -hmm. how how this shape how this was a half enclosed, half open space. So it, it started as something completely different. Mm -hmm. And then, and then transformed into something that was more, almost more important to me. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of setting that up that helps us in your design. Yeah, looking at the kinds of tools we use to design this. How do you think that process would be for someone who's not a designer? What what is that mean? Question. So how, how would the space be viewed or someone who's not a designer? Yeah. I, I, I haven't really tested this with designers. Mm -hmm. So maybe my question yeah, is, yeah. How do you, what problems or opportunities do you think you would encounter if you tested it with people who are Well, I didn't, even within the conversation I had with designers who were acting as community members, that same question came up whether it should be the the identity of a space should be written in or there should be a picture, but then you give a picture and then people start to visualize the space only as an icon. Um, so I think it is like, I think maybe that would be, a, I, I think a conversation uh, in knowing the community that would be uh, maybe playing the game, like maybe there could be different iterations of how, um, and symbology of how people understand spaces, but, um, I think like maybe like uh, like this is where partnership comes in like in terms of like learning um, about the people through people who already know the people um, so that could be I think one of the conversation is like how do people um, how do people within this space or community understand? I mean, we use certain tools for the design to envision space, and I, I think it's just a huge challenge mm -hmm. to figure out how to get people to envision. One of the suggestions that was given to me was also like magazine collage. Like there's different types of spaces and instead of maybe putting icons, there could be like just the just a board or a vision board and people could um, create their own spaces based off of spaces they already know, but you're still creating a new space. Um, could be a different um, so. But what you've started is something very generative. I mean this is like Cards Against Humanity, where you can just keep going and adding a new, a new deck of cards, right? This is, depending on the design project, maybe the community you want to work in, all of these, it will require perhaps different stacks, or groups of blocks. Um, I didn't think I'll be in a review where I'll think about Cards Against Humanity or cosplay, <laughs> but here we are. You know, you have, you, people were assigned different roles, yes, parent, child, you know, we gravitate to one. As designers, capital D, there are certain things we're expected to know or do, and there's this sort of what you're trying to do is democratize. Yes, you try to get rid of all those hierarchies. You are this, you are that, but you've given us different roles, and I wonder. I mean, it allowed us to play, which made us, you know, kind of we can throw these shackles off. All the rules go out the window, yet they don't. I mean, it opened up this sort of world where, what would it be like to design as a child? You know, where's the cotton candy machine? We stop thinking about, you know, um, Dr. Sutton, Charlie, you the setbacks <laughs> and all of the things where, you know, I think mean, that's something very enlightening. When you go into a place where we keep talking about this hierarchy of, mm -hmm. you know, designers or architects going into communities to try to educate the community, we're so tired that you have this thing where you put us in a position where we could be designer even if we're a child. Or you know, a grandma who can be designer, and so that's really empowering in a way. And it, it's also a lesson to us too, as designers, capital D. That where do we stop thinking about what should I do, but what can I do? And I 
it's a wonderful kind of free thing. That this is it's it, it, it's a game, but not. It's very serious and very important. And, and, and thank you for allowing us to play. So in the in reality, would the actual child be there? The yes. 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 Uh, yeah. The cue cards are only there for us, but in reality, right. but in reality, there would be the child. Yes. I think one of the things that, that in this that I would ask you to reflect upon after the thesis is over in the time back is what are the what are, what's the value of the kit of cards you design, and how does the geometry of it already preclude certain behaviors? In other words. There's a universality of the grid and the cube, which makes everything seemingly equal. So is that actually the game you want people to play? Is that the yeah. way in which you're setting it up? Are you predetermining by the design a process that is already highly qualified by the thing you design? Yes. Yeah. I don't need much time to reflect. I did think about that. Yeah. Um, so design is an open world, right? But there still are constraints that inevitably we do have to meet. And so I did design this around this idea that there would be some uh, replicability within like these new mass uh, There still would be mass produced housing, but with a more like communal touch to it. So there, start, there still were boundaries that I wanted to adhere to. And so therefore the shape and the cube. So there still is some creativity and flexibility to it but in the way that I like progress in it, for better or for worse, um, was to keep more on a grid. So is this yeah. eight by eight? Uh, 10 by 10. 10 by 10. And I'm if you're a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I just love that you've made a project about teaching. <laughs> That's how we've done. That's it's like teacher. embodied theory and have decided to <laughs> educate <laughs> folks about their own community. So it's really nice to see that translation. Yeah. Course evaluations are right around the corner. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 So I kind of uh, structured this around, because I really wanted to uh, do the mi uh, anthropology minor, but there was just not enough uh, availability for the courses. So I kind of like structured that around that in terms of like the main courses that you need, um, the electives that come, um, that are allowed for the main course, and then just other uh, school-wide electives that are um, able to be part of it. Um, and so ideally, this would be a 12 credit minor. Um, the new class would be called Community Designer. Um, so there's two required courses, uh, community designer, and then the one I didn't get to take, anthropology and design. Yes. Um, and then the other six credits would be, um, you would take two other classes. And I've taken most of these actually, which is why I'm really sad I can't get that minor. Um, but they're courses I'm currently in now, but also courses that I've taken over the four years I've been here. Um, so I, I think, and these all like spoke to me in terms of like uh, responding to people, responding to community. Um, and like stepping outside of ourselves as a designer to be what I like, my motto is like, how can I be of service? Um, so this would be something ideally that would be. Why would you think anthropology would be useful to you? I think it's like, um, with, like with everything I've been saying, like designers as a whole, that includes everyone, needs to know how people interact. Like uh, what I've seen in my course, or in my time here and as my background as an interior designer, is that like people don't engage people and we're designing for people, buildings are for people. Um, and so I think that like learning how to learn about cultures and learn about people is so important and such like a capstone um, in being a designer and an architect, which we don't do enough of. Um, so, yeah. And anthropology rather than sociology? Um, I don't know that much about sociology, but anthropology is something I look forward to for the next degree and because I've just been so animated for like the study of people, so <laughs> that's why I chose anthropology. Oh, then after yeah. anthropology, okay. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll, 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 I'll,
But it is a lifetime, so it is, you know, you know okay. four years, ten yeah. years. <laughs> You've got time. Thank you again. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.